We got Syracuse. We got Pittsburgh, 12 noon Eastern kick time on Saturday. ACC Network. Got Robbie Vino from wagertalk.com, mid major Matt from sportsmemo.com. I am Drew Martin, and we're breaking this game down from a Vegas perspective. 50 is the total. We got the Pittsburgh Panthers laying 21 and a half at home, hosting the Syracuse Orange. Mid major Matt, what are you thinking in this ACC matchup? Well, I noticed the powers that be put me on to talk about my alma mater, which is fine because uh, I'm okay and I'm resigned to the fact that it's going to be a long year for Syracuse. Uh, if you look at what happened in that 31 to six loss to North Carolina, you know the three three five looked good for uh, you know about a half, uh, about a little bit into the third quarter. Um, there was some optimism there with regards to our defense, but then again, North Carolina is a fourth quarter team. They've always seemed to be a fourth quarter team under Mac Brown. The offense is just abysmal. I mean, look, Dino Babers was brought in; he's an offensive mind. Sterling Gilbert's first year with the team. He's back with Dino after coaching elsewhere together. And the offense just didn't look good. No creativity. Uh, the offensive line is just a joke. And so there's just really no time to get anything going. A couple of drops, a couple of missed routes. So you attribute some of that to being week one. But look, this is another road trip. This is their second straight road trip as the uh, Carrier Dome continues to get renovated. And look, Pittsburgh and Syracuse have played some wild games. I mean, you look last year, there was that game. And then a couple of years ago, it was like a 76-61 game between the two of them. Uh, weird things always seem to happen when Syracuse plays Pittsburgh. So weird things might happen here, Robbie Vino. 21 and a half, though. Is, is, do you think it's weird enough to stay within that number? Syracuse did look good for, like Matt said, maybe a half, three quarters. But that fourth quarter, it got away from him in week one. Yeah, we even see some 22s right now, Drew. So um, it doesn't look like it's going down, only going up. And I think building off of what Matt said, you could probably make an honest case for Syracuse plus that many points here. Um Defensively, I'm surprised that Tony White's 335 took hold so quickly. But if it can frustrate Sam Howell and company for the better part of three quarters until the defense got entirely gassed, then, um, you know, it should be able to frustrate Kenny Pickett and Pittsburgh a little bit here. Um, that's going to be their calling card for the time being is can that defense hold up the offensive line, like Matt said, brutal. Uh, allowed seven sacks last week. But last year, they lose this game 27-20, and they allowed nine sacks. Pittsburgh is one of the best pass-rushing teams in the nation. They were last year. They've got a lot of that back this year. Um, they had a walkover against Austin P last week, right? The first six drives, they score six touchdowns. They gain over 400 yards on those six drives, as opposed to what Syracuse did against UNC, 14 possessions. Nine of those 14 guys ended in a minute 57 or less. 13 of the 14 ended in two minutes and 49 seconds or less. So obviously, you know, the quick offense not working, little backs into the middle of the line is not going to work for long. A uh, couple of drops, as Matt mentioned, hurt DeVito. DeVito winds up being the leading ball carrier on the team last week. I just think all their faults aside, the defense might be strong enough and the offense – you know, might come up with a play or two here to make 22 look awfully large. So if I was going to play it, that would be the way I'd go. I'd take Syracuse plus the 22, hoping that DeVito doesn't turn it over under pressure. Last week, he didn't throw a pick. He's Robbie Vino on Twitter, at Rob Vino Sports. And Mid-Major Matt, coming back to you, maybe a, a pick on this game. I mean, Rob Vino threw out some great stats in terms of uh, some ugly-looking drives. I mean, 9 of 14 drives under, what, a, a minute and change? Uh, it makes it really tough on your defense. What are you thinking for a pick in this game? Well, to me, the the, the way I'm looking probably is more to the total. I, I think this could potentially be a game under. I also think, depending upon what the number is, the Syracuse team total under could be the way to go. You know, I'm reading about how Taysir Mack and Lucas Kroll are both expected back. They probably could have played against Austin P. That's two key pieces to this offense. I'm not a huge Kenny Pickett guy. I don't think he's that good. I think with Maurice French gone, this is a Pittsburgh team that, you know, basically wants to play some ball control. Um, the less they use Kenny Pickett, the better. They've got the defense defensive edge in this one. So to me, I'm looking more towards the under. Um, they've gone under in 16 of their last 27 games. Uh, and to me, if, if you wanted to even get even more exotic, the under for the team total for Syracuse, potentially, depending upon what it is, I don't know how many points this Syracuse offense is going to score on the road against a very good Pittsburgh defense.
So mid-major Matt, you bring up, you know, being the alma mater, I wasn't going to touch that, but since you did, I mean, watching the Syracuse defense, do you think, you know, it, it, it could be actually considered a strength what they were able to do the first half against UNC? Well, they've got a really good corner in Trill Williams, and they've got a really good safety in Andre Sisco. Probably, arguably one of the top five safeties in the country in Andre Sisco, who had an interception last week. So, look, they can hold up in the secondary. The question is, can the front seven, well, actually now the front six, excuse me, uh, can they hold up against this Pittsburgh attack? And can they get enough rest? Can the offense do enough to give them some time to rest on the sidelines? You know, that first game, you've got all these teams that aren't used to playing a full game, so they're going to get gassed in the fourth quarter anyway. So the offense keeps the ball a little bit longer, the defense stays a little fresher, and, and, I, and I think that under for this game looks a little bit better. Follow him on Twitter, at MidMajorMatt, Robbie Vino on Twitter, at Rob Vino Sports. Check him out, wagertalk.com, sports. memo.com also guys remember two dollar tuesday each and every tuesday at both sites wager talk and sportsmemo.com top play from the top handicapper discounted to just two dollars